embossing of the metal is very similar to what we just did with the wood and except instead of using like a pencil and a wood burning tool like we did here we're going to use these metal tools so this little stylus becomes our pencil and you trace in like I've done here now as far as the supply standpoint, I have a piece of plexiglass that I put on my tabletop to just keep a nice, smooth surface. This is a little piece of suede. Then I've laid my copper down, and then my selected stencil I put on top. Then I use my stylus, and I just press into it, and it basically dry embosses that design. From here, we have options. I specifically chose this stencil because it has these cool open areas that sort of invite themselves to, you know, basically be decorated. And this can be done with another stencil. It can also be done with these tools for the metal embossing where you can impress designs in here. I'm going to do a little bit of both. So. Let's keep this here for the moment just to make sure our lines are good. And I think everything's pretty good on this. Now I'm going to cut this out. I'm just working in the middle from a, a management standpoint. So I flipped it over. I'm going to flip the stencil over. And the first thing I want to do is I want this center part to kind of puff out. So I'm going to get a tool that has a little round end and I'm going to just gently press against. Remember that suede's under there so it pre gives it this really nice soft little surface. And I'm going to press in here so that that part puffs out. This, the copper's super pliable and it really um, you know, it's, you don't have to press that hard or anything. There's a couple different sizes of these round things. Here's a big fat round one that you can do if you really want to get a, um, a more refined puffy area. I'm going to flip this over then and I'll show you how cool it's going to look. So when you flip it over, then you see you have this dimensional area on the front, which is really cool. Now, let's say I would have wanted some dimension, some carving or something in there. I could have done that too. I can probably still go back and do it, I'm guessing, but um, I sort of just wanted it plain, so I left it that way. Okay, so let's do put some carving on these other parts and get our stencil back in line here. And First, I think, oh, so many options, it's so exciting. Um, I'm going to put some little leafy patterns to echo that border that I put around. So I have found a leafy part of a stencil right here, and I'm going to carve some little leaf embellishments. Maybe I'll do something different over here. I've gone wild. I'm going to do some different leaves over in this one. Get a little flourish. But see, this is what makes it so nice with the stencils. They are just providing you with a lot of ideas. And you can just, you know, kind of use them as templates and ideas or whatever, you know, whatever you want to do. So. That's what I mean when I say think outside the stencil. Like just think about just this teeny weeny little part of the stencil and what you can do to make it more interesting. Or how you could incorporate it in a piece. This is a very old technique, by the way, from, um, from Mexico. And a friend of mine who's very good at it, um, just taught me a few ups and downs or, you know, high and low points of the technique. And I think it's a lot of fun. You can go in with these carving tools then and create a lot of dimension. This actually pokes little designs in. And I'm just sort of 
you know, devising this design as we go. It's fun. You just go, oh, what would look good there? Oh, I think this might. So give it a shot. And so then before you know it, you have an adorable little design that will be the center centerpiece of the book cover.